Hello there, welcome back to Becky Ballistics. This video was not planned, but I was overwhelmed with emails in the last 24 hours about the accident that happened on Alec Baldwin's set, where a woman was killed and a man injured by a single gun shot coming from what was supposed to be a prop gun. So I decided to make this quick video, taking the opportunity of putting my online exposure to good use. As some of you might know, I work as an expert witness in the field of ballistics and investigating accidents is my core business. But that's not what I'm here to do today. I have no data other than the bubbles of newspapers, which in the early hours of an accident are about as reliable as a chocolate teapot. So there's no chance I can go anywhere beyond an educated guess. What I do have, however, is one of the most valuable things on the planet, your attention. With that, I can do my part in preventing these tragedies from happening. You see, even not knowing what exactly happened on that movie set, there is no doubt that both the fundamental gun safety rules were violated. It only takes two rules to keep firearms safe, all the other ones can be boiled down to these two. Rule 1. Never, under any circumstance, point a gun towards anything you're not willing to kill or destroy, even if it's unloaded and with a bolt open. And that includes what stays behind your target. But why should you treat an unloaded gun as if it were loaded? I mean, you know your stuff, the gun is empty, why should you worry? Well, there are many reasons, and I want to tell you them all. You hear the saying, treat any gun as if it were loaded a lot, but very rarely it is explained why. Now, if the gun is effectively unloaded, it can't do any harm. The problem is the if. Firstly, you don't know what you don't know. There could be a different way for a particular gun to be loaded that you don't know of. And you can't prevent something if you don't know it exists. Let's do an example. Shotgun with a tubular magazine. You open the bolt, no round in the chamber. Nothing on the feed ramp either. You close the bolt and pull the trigger. Nothing happens. However, you rack the bolt again. And now there's a round in the chamber. If I pull the trigger, it would fire. We were sure it wasn't loaded. But now a shot could have been fired, and if the barrel was pointed towards anything living, now it would most likely be dead. In this particular case, that happened because the rounds in the magazine are only released after the trigger has been pulled. This is just an example though, many similar and more insidious scenarios might arise. And you know what? As trained as I am in firearms, a day will come where I put my hands on a weird or another firearm design that will manage to remain loaded without me realising. The only way I can prevent killing an innocent bystander is to keep the gun pointed away from him. Another reason is that you can't trust your judgement. We're closer to monkeys than we like to admit, we get things wrong all the time. Have you ever done something without realising? Have I already put sugar in my coffee? I don't remember doing it, but would I bet someone's life over it? My pistol was unloaded just a moment ago, but what if I or somebody else put a new magazine in without me noticing? Finally, not paying attention to where the gun is pointed because it's unloaded means training our subconscious that pointing guns at people is okay in certain circumstances, which means that if you are instead holding a loaded gun, it wouldn't feel that unnatural to point it against the director of photography. Second and last rule, never put your finger on the trigger until the very moment you have decided to fire. For the exact same reasons as rule 1, you must always follow this rule, even when the gun is unloaded and or with the bolt open. You only put the finger inside the trigger guard when you are definitely convinced you want to fire. Unfortunately, the filmmaking industry, that same community that is now mourning a woman shot dead on set, is inadvertently author of a massive disinformation campaign regarding the subject. Most of the times a gun appears in a movie, it does so with somebody's finger on the trigger at all times, often in the hands of a badass character. That same badass character is sometimes what gets young people interested in firearms, and unless previously trained, the first time they'll hold a weapon, they'll do it like their favourite character does. They'll think that is the right way of holding a firearm, maybe just to take a picture, maybe while pointing the gun at whoever is taking the photo. Filming a movie where the experienced gun-wielding character holds the gun without keeping the finger on the trigger at all times is not only going to give a good example to the audience, but it's also going to look more realistic. That's how guns are handled in the real world. You can actually distinguish real footage from movie footage by looking at the position of the trigger finger. I know that movies are fictional and that you shouldn't pose limits to creativity, but this misrepresentation is completely unneeded, it's making the movie look fake to the trained eye and give a bad example to the untrained one. 
Just to put things in the right perspective, in 2018, all social media platforms deemed the pistol emoji to be too inappropriate and switched to a squirt gun instead. I don't have to tell you that this move was quite useless, but they did it anyway. If a tiny drawing of a pistol was deemed too dangerous, shouldn't realistic depiction of deadly dangerous gun misuse be even worse? Which one do you think causes more damage? Before leaving you, I want to tell you this. As of today, in my relatively short career, I investigated a little over 40 gun discharge related incidents. In only 8 of them, the gun was fired intentionally, and that is including suicides. All the others were accidents due to lack of gun safety. Had those simple two rules been observed, none of them would have happened. Oh, and regarding the accident on the movie set, reckless beyond any imagination, that's my educated guess. That was all, I'll see you next time, bye.